Okay, do I need to talk very slow to compensate for, uh, for Steve and <laughs> the, the anti-Steve? <laughs> I'll go somewhere in between. All right, I'm going to talk about uh, generic power domains. Um, my name is Kevin Hillman. A little bit more about me. Um, I live in Seattle, uh, so if, I'm, if I appear a little bit tired, it's because, well, I'm, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> But uh, I also work sometimes from Nice because I work for Bay Libre and most of our team is in Nice. So I do travel to France fairly often and working in Nice. Um, like I said, I work for Bay Libre. We do lots of different things at Bay Libre. We're a small company, so we wear many hats. So I'm a kernel developer, but I'm also doing some management. And my latest achievement is I'm ergonomics uh, engineer because this is my, uh, I like to work standing up. So this is my, I only, re, I require the highest quality cardboard boxes when I, to stack my uh, computer on. <clears throat> and that's the floor mat from my rental car. So this is high quality stuff here. So I'm also a kernel maintainer. I, I maintain a few kind of dusty corners of the kernel that most people don't care that much about. But one of the things that you guys might care about, I'm the maintainer for the Amlogic SOCs, which is the, the chip in here. So all the stuff that Greg was talking about, mainline kernels, this the vendor Amlogic for the, the SOC on here is actually um, partnering with Bay Liebman. We're doing all the mainline work for this chip. So this chip, uh, this board has full mainline support uh, as of uh, 413. So well, full for some definitions of full. I mean, caveats for proprietary graphics and all that stuff uh, kind of apply. But So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Another thing uh, that you guys might be interested in is from th this audience. So last year at Kernel Recipes, uh, I don't know if any of you remember this picture. That's actually me. Um, thanks to our throw mic, I had a shirt on that apparently was a little bit too small. And somebody threw the mic back to me, and I had to reach down here to grab it. And apparently I'm so strong, I ripped my own shirt while I was grabbing the, <laughs> when I was grabbing the mic. And uh, Frank happened to be nearby, so he caught me. And so, that's a, so it was not a bear attack. It was a and a microphone accident. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the actual, uh, actual talk here. So um, for some of you, this, this image might actually look somewhat familiar because in Kernel Recipes 2015, I did a kind of introduction to power management talk and I used the same kind of image um, to kind of cover all of the different pieces of kernel power management. So today I'm not going to go into all these details because you can go back and look in the video. Um, but I'm mainly going to cover kind of way up in the upper right corner of this uh, slide. But there are a couple things I need to review um, to go over as we, just to get a little bit of background and a little bit of history. So this is the kind of big picture of kernel power management. And basically from, from bottom left to upper right also follows kind of a history of how power management evolved in the kernel. So for a long time, all we ever had was static power management, which is you know system-wide, suspend, resume. The whole machine goes off or the whole machine is on. There wasn't a whole lot in between. And over the years, we've kind of evolved things into more dynamic power management and uh, in different forms of that as well. So I'll hit on some of those a little bit on the way, but I'm mainly going to kind of talk about the, the upper right part of the thing. But this helps give a little bit of context. So for some very brief review, um, one of the things that we really need to cover and as a reminder, is this, uh, this kind of a key part of the driver model, this dev PM ops. So anybody that's written any sort of device driver has probably seen this. Um, if, and if, you haven't, if you've written a device driver and you haven't seen this, it means you don't care about power management, and so we need to have a talk later. But uh, so if you have written this, you, you've probably seen this. But basically, it's a, this dev PM ops. I'm going to come back to this a few times through the talk. So I just wanted to make sure you're familiar with this. And, if you don't know what it is, you can grep instead of listening to me. But uh, so the, this is really a key part of every driver and the key part of power management for uh, for all sorts of uh, for any power management that's at the driver level. So as a quick reminder, this is what happens when you do a system suspend. So there's a bunch of kind of there's several hooks for platform specific uh, power management. So when you the platform driver for the architecture or for the, the family actually does these things that are on the left side. There's a few callbacks that, are, that happened once for system-wide suspend. The things on the right are from dev PM ops and those actually, those callbacks get called for every single driver in the platform during a system-wide suspend. So it's just to show that during a suspend there's lots of different places in your driver where you get hooks to call, to hook into. You don't have to implement all these. 
because um, sometimes core code actually does it for you, but it allows you to hook in. But the important part to remember is this stuff gets called for every single device driver, every single suspend. So at any point in here, this is also what, kind of the common reason why you often have systems that don't suspend, because any one driver that fails one of these or returns an error for any one of these will stop the whole system-wide suspend. So it allows you to, it's very powerful, but it also allows you to, to break things. But again, this is Dev PM Ops, and this is going to be extended to implement the domains that I'm going to be talking about. So I wanted to just kind of do a little reminder, reminder piece on that. Right, so back to the big picture. So that was kind of the, that is useful for system-wide suspend, but the Dev PM Ops is actually going to be used for all the rest of the, the driver level suspend too. So um, I'm not going to talk any more about the static suspend, so all the stuff in the red we'll just kind of ignore. If you want to learn more about that, you can go back to the video from 2015. I go in a little more details there. I'm also not going to talk about any of the active power management, the stuff kind of in green on the left. CPU freak and all the fun around that. Um, so I'm only going to focus today on the dynamic power management. And even there, um, in, in dynamic power management, we have two kind of types of idle in the kernel. So the way things evolved, we, we first only ever did idle for CPUs. So you're probably familiar with CPU idle framework because that's existed for a long time. Well, I'm not going to talk at all about that. Because the way the kernel evolved, we actually have a different way of managing idle for CPUs and different way for doing it for devices. And that's just kind of more historical than technical. And uh, I hope to fix that one of these days too, and I'll talk about that in the end. So for today, all we're going to talk about is this kind of corner of the, the graph. So we're going to talk about power management for devices, um, and particularly what to do when devices actually go idle. So before we get to domains, though, I have to tell you a little bit about runtime PM because uh, power domains are built and PM domains are built entirely on runtime PM. So let's go a little bit into runtime PM. So for system-wide suspend, as I, as I mentioned, everything happens for the entire system all at the same time. So all the drivers are involved, all the drivers get their callbacks at the same time. Um, that's all fine and good when you know your entire system is actually going to be idle and you want it to be off. But that's not great for kind of more, more, um, more dynamic things where you'll, you may want to turn off only parts of your system or you only turn off parts, some drivers and some time. So Runtime PM actually gives you a framework for doing idle on a per device basis. So you can do idle single devices at a time and the, the notion of idleness is actually controlled by the driver itself. So the device drivers are actually the place where they, they know when they're busy, they know that somebody's requested them to do something, they know when uh, DMA is in flight or there's reads happening or something. So dr drivers can actually say, um, can do things independently based on their own notion of activity. And unlike system-wide suspend, you can't really, uh, this is not meant for drivers to af uh, affect other drivers. So the drivers are independently. Um, I say cannot prevent others from runtime suspending, but that's, you know, of course there are cases when they can, but in general, the drivers are independent. And unlike system-wide suspend, user space isn't involved here, so it doesn't matter. Um, in system-wide suspend, user space actually gets frozen before there's a system-wide suspend, but in runtime PM, it's all entirely based on the driver. Is this mic, like, changing echo or something? I'm... Okay. 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 As long as you can hear me, I'm good. And then, uh, actually, in recent versions of PowerTop, actually, you can see, um, if you ever see runtime, if you run PowerTap and go to device stats, you see runtime, uh, you see these device stats, and some of the fields actually have a runtime prefix in them, and it's usually, f uh, and those cases are all these dri dri device drivers that have runtime PM. So the runtime PM core is actually keeping stats on all the devices when they go idle, when they become active, and you can see the percentage of time that devices are spending idle or active um, in PowerTop. So that's actually a pretty handy thing. So if you're writing a device driver and you see that you're, you know your driver should be idle, but you see it's actually 100% in PowerTop or something, then there's, still, there's a bug going on someplace. And so the way that's impl implemented here, we have dev PM ops coming back again. Um, and uh, so there we have the runtime suspend. There's a few more functions that were actually added to dev PM ops to handle runtime suspend. So drivers have yet a few more functions, the places they can hook in um, to the power management core and, we'll get, and they get their callbacks. So let's talk a little bit more about the, how that actually works from an API perspective. So the, 
drivers actually, essentially all they do is tell the PM core, look, I'm about to do something, I'm going to be busy, and you, they do a PM runtime get. And when you're done doing whatever you're doing and you're, you, you're ready to, to be idle or you're, you don't have anything else to do, you do a PM runtime put. So that's, that's all it is from a driver perspective. Essentially, I'm busy, I'm not busy. And then, the, 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 you, then you can implement callbacks to, to get called whenever the PM core decides it's going to shut you off. So um, actually in a lot of, uh, like Greg was mentioning, these huge out of tree patches for various SOC kernels, a lot of those kernels are doing the similar thing, but they're using the clock framework. So whenever the, the devices are busy, they're just disabling clocks and enabling clocks. And so a lot of those uh, SOCs are not been converted to runtime PM, but you can do the same thing with runtime PM, and it gives you a lot more flexibility. By the way, stop me anytime if, if you have questions or if we can, uh, we can stop for questions anytime. Except I don't know where the mic is, but somebody does. Okay, good. So let's look a little bit more at the callback. So when you actually, when you actually, um, when a driver says it's busy, it does its, re it does its runtime PM put, the, the core is keeping a usage count. So the last time that a driver or an instance of a driver does a runtime put, it knows it's busy. And so its use count goes to zero. So looking a little bit closer at what that actually means, um, the driver does a put and the usage count hits zero, and then it's time for the PM core to say, okay, now the, now the thing is really idle, there's no more users, we can runtime suspend this device. And there's one more layer though in there between what the PM core does and what the device does. And that's the, typically that's the bus type. So if you have devices on a PCI bus or uh, any other type of bus, there's a layer of code that the bus type implements. And so it's actually, the, there's a layering here where the PM core calls the bus type and the bus type calls the device driver. Um, and in the driver model, there's a few layers here. There's bus type and there's, uh, there's, there's type and class and bus. Um, only Greg can probably explain what those other ones do. I can't, I can't explain that, but I know what bus type does. And, and the way PM domains are implemented is basically inserting themselves at that same level. So if you add a device to a PM domain, it kind of overrides the bus type and it's the PM domain function pointers that get called, which then it's their job to call the device pointers. So it's that layer, um, it's at the driver model layer of bus type where PM domains are actually implemented. So I just wanted to point out that kind of, the, the, the layering is important in the driver model there. So back to the callbacks, what actually happens then, once the PM core calls the bus type and the bus type calls you, you get a, you get a callback and basically your, your device is about to be idled and, which, and that might mean you're gonna get power gated or. Um, so you have to prepare for that. <coughs> and that means you might have to do a couple things to your driver. You might have to write a few registers to, in, to implement or to, tell, to turn on its low power options. You might have to actually um, save context because if your device is gonna lose power um, and when it comes back, you're gonna have to restore context. So there's some things like that you have to do, the driver will have to do. So this is where all the, the driver specific, device specific things would have to be done to to uh, man, man, uh, manage their, their state. And then the inverse same thing happens whenever the, whenever the device is gonna be busy again, it does a PM runtime get and then it has a callback for resume. So it's kind of the inverse. So it's, it's analogous to the system suspend except um, the runtime stuff can happen much more often um, because whenever your device is busy, if it's just doing on per, per transaction or something, you can actually be runtime suspending and runtime resuming pretty often. I won't go too much into auto suspend just for time, but it's a, it's a it's a it's essentially a way to say I'm going idle, but I don't want to be suspended for a little bit of time later than that because I know I'm going to be busy again kind of soon, and I don't necessarily want you to turn me off right away. So drivers can control kind of this if you're if you're idle a lot, but you have these intervals that you want to stay active. It allows you to control that type of thing from a driver from a driver level. Right, so that's kind of a brief review uh, or a brief bit of runtime PM, just enough so we can get into the actual meat of the talk, which is uh, PM domains. So this is kind of a this is kind of a simple, sim simplified version of what kind of a modern SOC looks like. 
Um, and the, the main thing I wanted to highlight here is all these little blue boxes on many on modern SOCs can be completely independent uh, hardware power domains, so separate voltage rails, independently controlled. They can be turned off independently of all the other ones. Um, and so we've had this type of SOC actually for a while, but the kernel hasn't had a good way of managing this until just a few years ago when we started working on generic power domains and PM domains in general. So what we wanted in the kernel was a way to be able to actually say we can manage all these things independently. We've had runtime PM and we could manage in, uh, devices independently, but we haven't had a way to manage the various types of grouping that SOC vendors kind of amuse themselves of with doing for in each generation of chip. They might have the same, all the same pieces of hardware on there, but they might redraw these blue boxes differently for, because it optimized a, a specific use case. So we needed a good way in the kernel to not only model this type of grouping, but also a way to model that that grouping kind of shifts for different families of the chip or for, for, different, uh, for different IP blocks. And even better, um, the way, especially in ARM land, the way a lot of these chips are built, the same type of IP block is used on an AmLogic SOC. It's also used in a Rock chip SOC and a Qualcomm SOC. And so, and each of those SOC vendors actually group things differently and construct things differently. So we need a good way of kind of defining all that stuff, how those things get grouped together, how those things get gated, and make it so that the driver, them, the driver for that particular IP block should not have to care that it's on a Qualcomm chip or an Amlogic chip, that it's the domain level code that, act, that can actually manage how those things are integrated. So the Linux PM domains actually uh, was the beginning to that. It allowed us to basically sit at that same level as the bus type and group devices so that we know that devices wanted to have all the same type of callbacks, we can group them in a domain. So it's similar to a bus type, but it's a little bit more arbitrary of a grouping. It doesn't actually have to represent a physical bus because IP blocks cannot, can be sitting independent, uh, not necessarily even on the same bus, but the SOC designer might have put them all in the same power domain. So we need kind of independent from physical bus, we need this notion of power domains groupings. So that's what we did with PM domains, but we implemented it kind of at the same level as the bus type. So the PM domains, um, if you look in the driver model, there's a structure for PM domains, which is kind of this abstract notion that sits at the same level of the bus type. So on top of that, we built this thing called generic PM domains, which is you sometimes see as GenPD and all the code in the kernel. And that's essentially implement, uh, kind of a reference implementation of, uh, of a PM domain built on top of the, the basic driver model functionality. And the basic idea is we want to we want to do something when, when we notice that all the devices that have been grouped together actually hit the same state. So whether they first when whether the last one actually goes idle or the first one becomes active, we want to do something to that that domain. And in the case of an of a actual physical hardware power domain, it might be actually turning off the voltage rail or it might be sending a command to some microcontroller that actually turns off the voltage rail or something like that. So we just wanted some, some way of um, grouping those. And in code, actually, the generic power domains are relatively simple because all you really do is um, you just want to know when the, thing is, when the thing is off. I'm going to do something when it's off, and I need to do something when it's turned on, and that's typically a regulator or some sort of voltage rail. So to implement a, a Gen PD, actually, the, the primary things are basically, you know, you have to implement the power off side or the, the, the power off callback and the power on callback. And in most cases, in, so in embedded SOCs, that's often just like a register write to some to, to the power domain hardware actually and saying, I want this power domain to go into this state and uh, that's all it is. Um, sometimes it's actually turning off the clock to a specific IP block which then power gates the rest, that, that particular setup. Um, so the, the implementation of the Gen PD itself is actually quite simple. How it integrates with everything is, is, is more complicated, but implementing the Gen PD, once you know how to kind of turn that device off and turn that device on, it's pretty simple. Um, oftentimes it seems like more and more uh, SOC vendors will put a small uh, Cortex-M0 or Cortex-M3 on chip that's an always on power domain, and that's the thing that actually gates all the power rails. Um, so you, rather than turning it off yourself, you're actually just sending a request to some microcontroller that's going to do the, the actual work. 
especially if it's the power domain for the CPU that you're running the commands on, you can't turn yourself off. Or you might be able to turn yourself off, but you can't turn yourself back on typically. So, um, so there's a couple other optional features in the power domain. I mean, it's basically on and off, um, and by default, that's what most people implement. Sometimes um, you want to know when a new device shows up in your power domain because you want to check its its physical state in hardware, and so you kind of keep your keep state of the power domain. You can keep track of that. Um, so you there are callbacks for when a new device gets attached to your power domain, and there are callbacks for when a device is removed from your power domain. So typically, the attaches happen um, when devices are probed. They show up and they say, "I want to," you know, either it comes from the device tree or the device can just say, "Attach me." I want to be attached to this power domain, and you'll get a callback. And, um, but in a lot of the pow the implementations that are currently in the tree, there's not very many users of that. So this is an example of, of, or actually this comes straight from the documentation, the device tree documentation, but this is typically how things are implemented, especially in ARM SOC land. Um, we use the device tree to describe all this stuff. So you describe, you describe your power domain um, with the compatible string, string that you actually, then it's, it's actually, that's the string that you match in your, the driver, the implementation of the power domain itself. Um, and you basically define a few things about where the thing exists in hardware. Um, but then, the, how devices are attached to it, as you describe your, the rest of your devices in the device tree, you point essentially using the power domains uh, property of your device, you tell it which power domain you're actually hooked up to. So then when your device probes, it's the device tree probe that says, oh, I see this power domain, um, I'm going to actually attach it to that power domain, and then the power domain will get that attached device callback. So you can just, this, this way you can describe the whole hierarchy of which devices are in which power domains entirely in the device tree. And that way when the SOC vendor changes things for the next rev of the chip, you can reorder all this stuff and you, it's entirely in the device tree description how the, how the layout actually happens. So it's pretty powerful that way, is, assuming you don't mind the device tree. But this is all documented pretty well in that documentation file that I referenced there. So another cool thing about power domains is this notion of governors. So when all the devices, um, some, sometimes you want to make decisions when all the devices go idle, you might not necessarily want to actually gate power in that domain. You might want to wait a little bit or you might want to, you might know that those devices are going to be active really quickly again. So it's, it may not be worth it to actually gate power. Especially if there's external voltage regulators involved, so those voltage regulators can take time to ramp down and to ramp back up. So there's definitely latency things to worry about in this. So GenPD has this concept of governor. So once, once all the devices actually hit an idle state, the GenPD actually calls its governor and just says, okay, I'm ready to turn off. Is it okay to me, for me to turn off? And that's this suspend okay hook. And so the governor can basically yes, say yes or no, and then the domain will actually get suspended, the, the power will be cut, and so on. And so the, you, you, these are basically pluggable governors. Every power domain can implement its own governors, um, but there are a couple of examples in the tree that most people are using. So the, so the built-in examples are an always-on gover, governor, which kind of does what it says. It just basically never shuts off, and so the, that suspend okay hook just always turns false. And so um, that's just kind of a simple case. The, the, mo the more commonly used one is this QoS governor. And it allows you to, for certain devices to set kind of quality of service uh, QoS constraints and say, I have this latency or I don't want to be turned off right now. And, uh, and that governor will check these various flags. And so we, let's look a little bit about some of those, some of those flags quickly. Um, the system-wide stuff we don't really care about for for generic power domains. Um, that's used kind of in CPU idle, so we don't need to worry about that one for, for this context. But for on a per device level, you can actually set a flag. And the first one is kind of important, and some people abuse this one. But if, you're, if your device is getting powered off and you don't want it to get powered off and you haven't quite figured out why, the device driver can actually set this no power off flag. So you can still do, you can still tell the core that you're idle um, but you set this flag when you tell it's idle, and then when the governor, the Gen PD governor, comes along and says, "Okay, this guy's idle," but he also said he doesn't want the power gated. So um, this is often a useful tool in your debugging. So if you're 
you're writing a driver, and especially if you haven't written your context save and restore code for your IP block, but if you actually go idle and the power domain code is cutting power, then your, your driver basically you know, crashes the first time you actually hit idle because power go, goes off and power comes back and you have no state and the driver crashes. So this is, this is a little bit more of a debugging tool. Yeah, do you have a question? So do you, do you change these flags uh, at runtime or? Yeah, drivers, drivers can change those flags at runtime, yeah. yeah. And then another one is this resume latency flag. So again, drivers can set these flags. So if the driver is busy and it knows that it's idle, but it also knows that it wants to wake up really quickly if an interrupt happens or it knows it might, it might want to wake up in a specific amount of time, it can actually set a, la a resume latency. And then the implementation of the power domain itself um, has this notion of how long it typically takes to shut itself off and bring itself on and it checks the device latency and if it knows that a, a particular driver has said I need to wake up in you know five milliseconds but the actual the time to shut off this power domain is 10 milliseconds then it's not going to actually shut off that power domain until that constraint actually goes away. And so these are also dynamic, so it's often a driver want to do this during a certain phase of its operation, it's really lat latency sensitive, and it will actually set those flags. And then when it's done with that, it can remove those flags and then actually get power gated again. So it, it gives quite a bit of power over the, to the driver about how power gating might actually happen without having to know that much about how things are implemented at the power, at the power domain level. We still good? It's lunchtime. <laughs> You're hungry. I'm hungry too, yeah. So that's kind of the overview. So um, what I also wanted to cover quickly was just kind of what's happened in the last year. So there's been a, a fair amount of development on generic power domains, especially in the last year. There's been a lot more traction upstream. So about a year ago in 4.8, we had about 18 different platforms kind of using generic power domains. And uh, as of 4.13, we're up to 24 different users. So there's been quite a bit more interest um, in using that, and that's actually made some helped us make some enhancements in the power domain code as well. Um, but it's, so it's getting some traction. It's been actually in the kernel for quite some time, and I've been kind of evangelizing it for a while. But it's taken a long time to get some uptake. But it's you know recently getting some uptake, so that's great. Um, so some other recent additions, we added some statistics and debug stuff. So similar to runtime PM where the, you can actually look in PowerTop and see some stats about individual devices. We now have those stats for domains themselves. You can see when entire domains are active, when they're inactive and percentages of time and stuff. We don't yet have PowerTop support for that. So if anybody likes PowerTop and wants a nice thing to add, you know, this would be a great feature in PowerTop as well. We also added this idea of IRQ safe domains. So typically the callbacks for these power domains are actually called under certain locking conditions. Um, but if you have power domains that actually need to run code that's, that's in atomic context, um, we didn't actually have support for that, but now we do. So that's recently added. Um, we also, the recent feature is this always on domain. So you can still group devices, but say that the domain is always on. And uh, if it's always on, you might wonder why you would even want to describe it in domain, but uh, it's typically because in this chip, it might, this block might be in an always on domain, and the next chip, it might be actually in a gatable domain. So you want to actually have the, the concept of both and, be, and for that to be flexible. So some stuff that's actually under discussion, kind of RFC and, and mailing list uh, discussions and arguments lately. So like I mentioned in kind of my big picture thing, you can see there's a different path for managing idle for CPUs and for devices. Um, ideally, we'd like to merge those and we'd like to be able to use runtime PM and Gen PD for, for CPUs as well. So that would mean kind of using switching to runtime PM for CPUs, but then also modding clusters of CPUs as Gen PDs. Um, and that would, that would give some, uh, there's been several versions of uh, RFC on the list for that over the last couple years. It's been slow, but I think we're finally getting there. Um, and uh, so that's, yeah, the last version of, I think, has just come out last week of that RFC, but um, we're getting close on that. The other thing that's kind of ongoing battle is better interaction between uh, simplifying what drivers have to do when you when the driver needs to handle static suspend, so system-wide suspend, and runtime PM. But essentially, the driver, a lot of drivers, especially on ARM chips, 
you end up having to do exactly the same things. And so you end up kind of having overlap and sometimes even conflict between what your runtime PM, like if you're actually doing runtime PM activities and then a system-wide suspend comes in at the same time, there's some challenges there. So we're trying to uh, simplify that interaction. Um, and we actually have workarounds for several of the, the current issues, but they're kind of, they're hard to, they're hard to get right. So we're trying to make the core code better for that. And then also, um, like I mentioned, some, some IP block might be, exist on an ARM chip. It might also exist on uh, an Intel chip somewhere. And, and on, on x86, it might actually not just be on a, on a different power domain. It might actually be managed by ACPI, in which case is, there's actually firmware behind it. And there's, ACPI has, a, has a, its own implementation of a, of, a power, of a PM domain. And so we're trying to make sure that devices that work on ARM can also work on x86. It's the same IP block, it just is a different um, PM domain. But the ACPI implementation of PM domains is slightly more complex than the generic uh, PM domains. And so we're trying to make those work better together. Um, and then the other thing that really is gonna complicate things, especially it's gonna mess up my pretty picture where I kind of kept idle and, and dynamic and active separate is we wanna add um, performance states to power domains. So not, not just being able to handle um, idle states, but also active states. So the notion of having a whole domain that is not just on or off, but actually might have, it might essentially have voltage and frequency associated. So it might have a performance state. Um, and and uh, there's been a few proposals for that on the list as well. So that's another thing that's, that's under discussion today. That's gonna be a, a little bit harder one to, to merge, but it's, I think that's up to V10 or something on discussion on the list. So, so that's PM domains, that's generic PM domains. Um, we ended up just kind of covering this kind of upper corner of the, of the chart. But like I said, if you want to get a little bit more uh, big picture overview of all of power management, you can go back to the kernel, kernel uh, recipes archives and there's more details on all the different pieces. So that's it for me. Any more comments, questions, complaints? So uh, you said that uh, the device tree is used to define the PM domains. Um, what about ACPI systems? Uh, and, uh, is it, and also, would it be possible to add new PM domains, define PM domains at runtime, for example, uh, on uh, many laptops with dual GPUs. Uh, we have GPUs we are, which are a sort of SOCs nowadays. They include not just a GPU, but also audio chips, mm -hmm. and uh, which can be powered off independently. And uh, so as far as I know, there is no way to de describe that. So first, the ACPI question. In ACPI, the ACPI has its own PM domain implementation. So you can you basically have generic power domains or ACPI power domains, they're this basically slightly, it's a separate implementation because they have different things to do. So in a case of ACPI, the descriptions don't come from the device tree, they actually come from ACPI tables. Um, power resources and all that. Yeah, I don't know the names of all the ACPI tables, I try to pretend that doesn't exist because I work on ARM, so. But uh, it's, it's coming to ARM as well, so I'm starting to have to understand it, but. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's not device tree, all that stuff comes from the ACPI tables. And then there are callbacks, I think, in ACPI for the certain, certain states as well, that, that, but that's all handled by the ACPI PM domain implementation. And that's, that's why we're, one of the complexities we're dealing with now is when a, when a chip comes out with some device that exists on an ARM, ARM64 or something, but the same IP exists on x86 and it's an ACPI. We want the driver to be identical. And right now we don't have that. We have to do some ACPI specific stuff and some Gen PD specific stuff. And we're trying to, trying to clean all that up so we really can be independent. And then on the dynamically creating power domains, so you can actually have nested power domains. So you, can, you, could, um, you could define things in device tree, but you could also create them in runtime. Like when you detect that a GPU shows up, um, you could create more domains and nest them however you like uh, dynamically in the kernel. Uh, I read on a slide, um, uh, Raphael gave a talk a few years ago and he said that it's not allowed to create uh, generic PM domains at runtime. Yeah, you can, yeah. Well, whether Raphael merges it or not, I don't know, but you can do it. 
Okay. Anybody else? All right. Bon appétit. <laughs>